This could be the biggest revamp of capital rules what, since the financial crisis. Exactly. It's the next step towards the implementation of the Basel III rules. It's a vote on Thursday. The FDIC and Federal Reserve will vote, and it's all begun by Michael Barr, the vice president of supervision for banking at the Fed, and it's part of his sweeping new rules. Essentially, what will be proposed most likely is that banks will have to reweight risk assets. And according to Bloomberg Intelligence, it may actually mean the banks have to hold $2 more per $100 of risk-weighted assets. That's a lot of $2 per $100. And in fact, it may even amount to an, a erasure of $121 billion billion up over the past 10 years by at least the six to eight biggest banks in the United States since the financial crisis, essentially, in so-called excess CET1 capital or common equity tier one capital. So if these proposals go ahead and banks have a lot to say about it, so, you know, it's going to take some time, that's what's going to happen. Several questions get raised here. So first of all, for investors, what does it mean for buybacks and for dividends? Obviously, Michael Barr says, oh, don't worry, this is going to take some time to implement. Banks will have time to build up even more of a cushion, but investors are saying, well, I like my dividends every quarter now. I don't want to see that go away. I also don't want to see buybacks go away. It also raises questions for the end user. Will loan activity have to be crimped? Will banks be able to loan to lesser collateralized borrowers, for example. And finally, it also brings up questions about products that banks are offering, fee-generating products. Jamie Dimon had a lot to say about this recently on a conference call, and I'm quoting. He says, this is great news for hedge funds, private equity, private credit, Apollo, Blackstone. They're dancing in the streets, and that's because depending on how the market reacts, banks may have to pull out of certain types of exotic derivatives or you know, other fee-generating activities from e EM products to securitization. So what happens after the vote on Thursday, Bonnie? Right. Well, Heidi, we'll get more details even before the vote. We're going to get hundreds of pages from the different regulators on what these proposals are. Then we'll get the vote, which presumably will pass, although lawmakers on both sides of the aisle will have something to say about this, no doubt. Then there's a 60 to 90 day formal response period. Michael Barr says he welcomes response from banks, and they are getting ready to respond. We've already heard from many of them, in fact. Paco Ibarra of City t talking to Shinali Basak in recent weeks on Bloomberg TV, also saying that it's an open question as to what exactly is going to be impacted. It's also an open question for the smaller banks, the regional banks, because Michael Barr has said that he wants this to impact banks from $100 billion in assets up, and that includes banks like Huntington, banks like Key Corp, smaller banks than the big six or the big eight. And then after that, it's going to take about a year for it to be implemented, but uh, you can bet that something is going to be implemented that's going to raise some of that $121 billion built up.